Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about math on integers, or rather, limited bit ints, where we often like to pretend that we can just do our arithmetic and things work out, but it's sort of a lie we tell ourselves when there's limits to how big they can get, whether we're counting items in an array or calculating other kinds of quantities. And maybe we aren't doing fuzz testing either. So for our problem today, we're going to count up people and countries. And I just have here the top 10 countries by population in the world, with populations taken off of Wikipedia. And we're going to print them out and total them up to see how many there are among all these. So let's run it. And we get a total population of 210 million, which is obviously wrong since China alone is more than that. And in fact, even if we keep just China and India, we get a total of negative 1.5 billion people. Because on my compiler and operating system, my signed integers are constrained to about 31 bits of data. And interestingly enough, C and C++ standards don't even tell you that you'll get wraparound behavior. The behavior for signed integers is undefined. Now, if we went unsigned here or to more bits, we might not have this problem. But we might have it on something else under different circumstance a different day. And as far as signed versus unsigned goes, it definitely is for many of us a more intuitive feel for signed arithmetic. So for example, if I just subtract one country's population from another, if I happen to choose an order that gives me negative values, this 37 million less for India makes more sense than the modulus space difference of over 4 billion. So the reason sometimes why people stick to signed ints by default. But there are pros and cons in many things. So if we live in a world with some kind of limits on our bits, and we might not have thought about in advance what might happen to us if we go past our imaginary small values, what can we do about it? Well, in the upcoming C23 standard, they're adding checked add sub and mul macros so you can see if there was overflow when doing your operation. And today, you can also use sanitizers to check for undefined behavior of this sort. So here I've included dash f sanitize equals undefined on my compiler call where now we see this runtime error for the overflow. But what else can we do about this in other languages? Let's take a look at Ruby. We might have used other languages such as Grain or Python or others with big ints by default to try this out, but I was in a Ruby mood today. I've done the same thing as before, where I have a list of countries and I print them out and add them up and give the total. Let's see how this works. And we see it adds up just fine to four and a half billion for the combination of these countries. And just to make a point here, let's go to some arbitrarily large number. And we see that our integers can indeed get very large in Ruby. Now in many of these cases, we might be better off using floating point numbers instead, depending on our needs, and the dynamic allocations being used here to create arbitrarily large integers, as well as to do all the checking involved, could potentially be much slower than simple limited bit arithmetic. So there are pros and cons to these things, but it's nice to know that when you're doing your math, you don't get randomly wrong answers. So let's go back to limited bits, at least in some ways, and take a look at zig and see how they behave by default here. Let's run this. And we get an error by default. If I'm in debug mode or release safe mode in zig, it's going to check for integer overflow. And in debug mode, I even get a stack trace of where it happened. But if I compile and release fast or release small mode, these checks go away. And I find that I'm back to where I was in C++. So the usual usage model in Zig is you test a lot in debug and or run and release safe if you want to be careful. If you want to be fast, it lets you be fast and hopefully you've done your proper testing elsewhere in advance. And as I also mentioned for C++, I can increase integer sizes as one option for working around these things. And now I get my four and a half billion. Now maybe I don't need 128 bit integers, but it was easy to type. And in fact, in Zig, you can arbitrarily decide that I want 127 bit integers, which also works well enough in this case. You can choose your bit size here, which makes you wonder if it might be interesting to make a language with rules that keeps track of a smaller size of each integer. And whenever you're doing math on them, the type becomes the next larger size necessary to hold the result. And maybe that even gets off a little bit into dependent typing, which I haven't explored yet, but I think it could be interesting. The other fun thing about Zig 
is that you have some other options in your arithmetic operators. We can use modulo arithmetic explicitly, in which case it guarantees this behavior. So now we have our wraparound to 210 million, but it's defined behavior that I've said is what I'm wanting. There's also saturating arithmetic operators that hit against the wall at the max of 32-bit signed integers in this case. Anyway, let's take a look at Rust and let's see its default behavior. Well, just like Zig in debug mode, it's going to give us a panic on overflow. And we can request a stack trace as well. And like Zig, we can run in release mode where that's no longer being checked. And we can also choose relatively large sizes on our integers as well. Where of course, 64 bits would be more than enough for that size also. And difference of these languages also have different rules about how you cast and interoperate between different kinds of integer sizes. Where of course, converting to a smaller size might also have overflow problems. And in this regard, over here on the blog for the C3 language, there's some great entries on discussing various kinds of trade-offs you might have with handling casts and integer overflows. And also looking specifically at Rust, they have an interesting variety of checked, overflowing, saturating, and other kinds of arithmetic you can choose from as spelled out function names rather than operators. And before we're done, let's take a look at Pony as well. Now, Pony is most well known for doing concurrent programming, and I definitely need to explore that. But for today, I'm just looking at how they handle integer arithmetic. And I find it interesting because of this Pony philosophy that runtime speed is more important than everything except correctness, because incorrectness is simply not allowed. That's the philosophy. And so the question is, what default behavior do they have here? And here I'm doing the same as before. I have my list of countries and I'm totaling things up and printing them out. So let's run this. And we see that we have a wraparound behavior because that's what Pony Edition does by default. And instead of being undefined like in C and C++, for its signed arithmetic, it's guaranteed to do the wraparound behavior because they decided that was the easiest and or fastest thing that had defined actual behavior to it. But there are other options as well. So we can ask for partial arithmetic that sometimes gives us an answer and sometimes gives us errors. And it doesn't like to say we might give an error if we're not giving one. So I couldn't keep this question mark on here by default otherwise, unless I had something else that could potentially throw maybe. So let's see if I did this right here and see what kind of error we get. Well, I obviously did that wrong. Yeah, I shouldn't do that on the string concatenation, just on my actual arithmetic. And we see that we handle the error case down here when it happens after the overflow from our first two countries. So unlike Zig and Rust, where we have different compiler modes for checking overflow or not, in Pony, we choose on our own on a case-by-case -case basis whether we want error checking in our arithmetic. In this case, the partial options, which have names and matching operators. There are other kinds of ways of checking here as well. And you can even choose to use unsafe if you want to for raw speed. Now, presumably, you would only do this if you've already checked in advance through your testing that you're not going to have any overflow. This is you choose if you want to be unsafe. And again, they have operators in this case to match the function names in case you want wiggly addition. Anyway, I hope this has been fun. Maybe we can look more at these kinds of issues in the future. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.